Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Welcome. We're talking about college affordability with someone who knows it very well. He is Robert Kelchin, Assistant Professor of Higher Education at Seton Hall University and the author of Higher Education Accountability. Good to see you, Robert. Good to see you. Glad to be here. Let's talk about affordability. There are a whole bunch of folks watching us right now in uh, more than a few states saying, you know what? I went to school, my kid went to school, and I've got a ton of debt. Is that the norm? Is it the exception? What is it? There's a lot more debt than there used to be. The typical debt for someone with a bachelor's degree is about $37,000 right now. But if you went to graduate school or if you went to an expensive private college and your parents helped you pay, that's where you see eighty dollars to $100,000 in debt or even more. And graduate, by the way, I should disclose that our son um, is in graduate school at Seton Hall as we speak right now, and I can attest to what you just described. <laughs> um, the, 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 the whole thing is that people think they know. Some people think they know what it costs to go to college, but then they face sticker shock. Describe it. Colleges charge different prices to different people, but the way they do that is they set a high price as a sticker price for everyone, and then they'll give you grants or scholarships based on financial need, academic ability, whether you're good at sports or something else. And you end up with students paying a whole range of different prices. But the concern with that is some people may get scared away by seeing that high sticker price and not going through applying and actually seeing the discount that they'll get. Let's talk about this a little bit. Can someone or a family with a child, with, a, with no longer a child uh, going to school, is there, are there any ways that they could realistically, tangibly reduce the cost of higher education? The, the best way to do that is to finish on time. Most students for a bachelor's degree do not finish in four years anymore. Why does that matter? Because you pay for an extra year, plus you're not out working full time for an extra year. So you have the actual tuition price, you have living, and then you have the opportunity cost of not working. So if a student says, you know, and again, we're not talking about illness, we're not talking about a family situation. If a student says, you know, I'd like to chill this semester. I'd, I'd rather not have the pressure of having to study, you've got exams. I want to just take this semester. Parent says? You shouldn't do that. You should take as many credits as you reasonably can. And even if it means you work less and take more classes, even if that means you borrow more in a given year, if that gets you through faster, it probably means less debt in the long term and more earnings in the long term. That's interesting. I often think about the, the majors that people choose, students choose. If someone chooses art education and his or her parents says, you know, art education, how much money can you make in the field of art education? The student says, but this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I care about, whether it's music or whatever it is or political science, the, the social sciences, if you will. Does it matter that much what the major is? A, in terms of income that's potentially earned, but B, shouldn't it be, loaded question I know, what the student's really interested in? It, it matters a fair amount what students major in, but what I'm more concerned about is, can you make a decent living? If you don't care just about income, if you're happy making $50,000 a year or 90,000, then you can major in most fields and do okay. But if you're about making as much money as possible, then you choose your major much more carefully. How about you make an 80 or 100 grand and you're miserable and you had the right major to help put you in a position to meet the right people, to be in a field that's attractive, but you hate your job? It's not going to be your job for that long then. At some point, you'll get tired of it and leave. Curious about this. There are people who are in the workforce right now who are more and more people are going back. And I'm curious about this. Are, are more and more people going back who have been in the workforce, not traditional students, if you will, in terms of age, but going back to get a degree, an advanced degree, whatever degree they didn't get before, or are they just going to go without matriculating? Most people are going to get a degree or credential. And the big growth right now is people pursuing graduate degrees. People going for undergraduate degrees, that gets much larger during a recession when you may not be able to work as much or you need that credential to get your foot back in the door. But right now it's much more at the graduate and professional level. Next recession we'll see more growth at the undergraduate level. Robert, it's interesting. The title of your book, Higher Education Accountability. Accountability to whom? I wrote the book looking at accountability to everyone. That colleges think about accountability sometimes that they're trying to respond to the federal government or responding to the state 
or accrediting agencies or what even the public wants. But they often don't think about these pressures all together and sometimes pushing in different directions. And, and that's why I wrote the book. But, but isn't primarily the question of accountability about accountability to students? The, the goal is to protect students. And accountability, say, from the public is really mm. focused on students. Accountability from the state, for example, mm. may be focused on students. It may be focused on economic development needs. Yeah, I'm curious about the whole community college question. Mm -hmm. As we do this program right now, um, in the spring of 2018, Governor Murphy's talking about proposing free community college. A, do you think it makes sense? There's a strong argument to make for it in terms of, for many students, community college is already tuition free. But the price tag is still about $200 million. Okay. And I don't know where they're getting that money from. The other part of this is, uh, as we do this program, there's always a, a presidential tweet, if you will, coming out. <laughs> Georgette, help me on this, who's in my ear. Um, actually, the president tweeted recently that vote, that community colleges are, I'll paraphrase, you can check it out, are more like vocational mm -hmm. schools. Now, people can decide for themselves, is he right? He's half right. So community colleges serve two purposes. They serve workforce training in the short term. If you want to learn basic accountancy, welding, things like that, community colleges are a great choice. Are they also not a stepping stone for those who go to four-year schools? That's the other function. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> that's not an accurate tweet. It, it, it's half true. If, respectfully, if you leave the other half out, which is that it gives people an opportunity to go to a four-year school, the people can decide for themselves, yeah. but, but uh, there's an accountability question in how we communicate as well. And so Robert Kelchin is the author of Higher Education Accountability, and your publisher is? Johns Hopkins University Press. Go out there, check it out, and uh, Robert, I want to thank you for joining us, because all thank of you. us, one way or another, uh, are affected by it, either through taxes or through our own children going through school. By the way, one more thing to disclose, Seton Hall University is, in fact, uh, one of the underwriters of this independent nonprofit production company. We'll be right back right after this. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, Wells Fargo, Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, Fedway Associates, NJ Best, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.